Dear student, welcome to the problem solving session on Gauss Divergence Theorem. In this session, we are going to verify Gauss Divergence Theorem for a given problem. Let us go into the problem. Verify Gauss Divergence Theorem for a given vector f over a cube. So, the length of the cube is given as 1. So, as usual, we are going to solve the problem step by step. Let us consider the first step. We have to write the given f vector. And before going to the step, we have to visualize the given problem. The given problem is cube. So, let us draw the cube whose size is 1. Now, we have to mark the vertices. See, this is the origin 0, 0, 0. For x axis, I am going to consider i vector. For y axis, j vector and z axis, k vector. So, now we have to find this points. It is very easy. The origin is 0, 0, 0. In the x axis, we have 1, 0, 0. For y axis, we have 0, 1, 0 and z axis 0, 0, 1 respectively. So, from the figure I can easily write the limits. That is my step 2. My limits are going to be x equal to 0 to 1, y equal to 0 to 1 and z equal to 0 to 1 as given in the question. Next step 3. We are going to verify Gauss divergence theorem. So, I have to write the formula for Gauss divergence theorem. Double integral over s f vector dot n cap ds is equal to triple integral over v del dot f vector dv. And very important in Gauss divergence theorem, s is a closed surface, v is the given volume. dv is of your choice. You can choose dz, dy, dx or if you want to choose dx, dy, dz in any other combination provided you have to take the limits properly according to this combination. So, now for the given problem, I am going to verify Gauss divergence theorem. That is, I am going to first find my RHS and then I am going to find my LHS and we have to verify that LHS is equal to RHS. To achieve this, we need del dot f. f is already given in the question. We know del is going to be i vector dou by dou x plus j vector dou by dou y plus k vector dou by dou z k vector. So, now let us evaluate del dot f vector. So, del dot f is going to be a scalar. Del dot f is going to be dou by dou x 4 x z minus I will take outside dou by dou y y square dou by dou z y z because i dot i j dot j k dot k is 1 remaining all combinations are 0 therefore from del dot f I get this. Now differentiating partially with respect to x y and z we will be getting 4 z minus 2 y plus y simplifying we get 4 z minus y. This is my del dot f. Now we are going for step 4. That is my RHS and we know the limit is going to be 0 to 1 everywhere. So, I can take in any combination 0 0 0 1 1 1 del dot f is 4 z minus y. So, I am going to take this as dz dy dx. You can also take in a different combination since all the limits are constant. Now, integrating this with respect to z, we will be getting 4 z square by 2 minus y z. Applying the upper and lower limits, we will be getting double integral 0 to 1, 2 minus y dy dx. Now, integrating this with respect to y, we will be getting 2y minus y square by 2, 0 to 1 dx. Substituting the limit, we will be getting 0 to 1, 2 minus 1 by 2 dx. It is going to be 3 by 2 integral 0 to 1 dx. Integral dx is x 0 to 1. So, my final answer is going to be 3 by 2. So, we got our RHS 3 by 2. It is now time to find LHS and we have to verify the Gauss divergence theorem. So, double integral over S f vector dot n cap ds. So, it is nothing but all the surfaces on the cube. So, we know that cube has six sides or six surfaces or six faces, whatever it is, we are going to do one by one. We are going to split this into six surfaces and we are going to do double integral six times. Let us have the visualization of all the six surfaces. This is my cube. When I take over x, it moves like this. So, I can see only x. This is going to be my front side and this is my back side. For front side, the equation is x equal to 1. For the back side, we have x equal to 0. Therefore, we can write this S1 and S2. It is nothing but my front and back surface. Next, in the same way, we have to visualize y axis. 
So in the y-axis, we have two surfaces, that is right and left. This is my right surface and this one is going to be my left surface. Here the corresponding equations are y equal to 1 and y equal to 0. So we can write this as surface 3 and surface 4. Next, what is left out? Z-axis. When we go for the z-axis, we have two sheets that is top and bottom. This is my bottom and this is my top. So for bottom, the equation is z equal to 0 and for the top we have z equal to 1. So now we can write this two surfaces as S5 and S6. Hope you understand students. For simplicity, you don't want to write this much being. You can simply write like this double integral s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 s6 at the end you can write this as f vector dot n cap ds done now it is time to find the double integral for all the six surfaces that is not an easy job i'm going to make this very simple in a tabulated way so let us draw the table before drawing the table write the given vector on the top of the table so now i'm going to consider seven columns and seven rows so that we can get all the information about the problem. First I am going to write the surface and then second one the face. Third one the corresponding equation. Fourth one is going to be my n cap unit outward normal vector. Then from f vector and n cap I can easily find f vector dot n cap that's why I wrote f vector here. After finding f vector dot n cap using the values in the equation I am going to find the corresponding values and finally I am going to write ds. ds is going to be in any combinations like dx dy or dy dx or dz dy. It's according to the surface which we took. Done students. Now we have to fill one by one all the columns in the table. So I have six surfaces. I am going to take this as s1, s2, s3, s4, s5, s6. Now as we said s1 and s2 are dealing with x they are going to be my front and back s3 s4 dealing with y they are going to be right and left s5 s6 are dealing at the z axis so it is going to be top and bottom done student next we have to fill the equation so front and back deals with x right and left deals with y top and bottom deals with z for front right and top give the upper limit that is 1 1 1 and for the back left and bottom we are going to give the lower limit 0 0 0 as we see in the figure it is very easy so just remember front right top give the upper limit values back left bottom give the lower limit values done next we are going to write n cap n cap is the unit outward normal vector. See this figure, we say the direction is i vector, j vector and k vector. Unit outward normal. So, it have to move perpendicular to the surface outward. So, it should not penetrate the cube or a given rectangular box or whatever it might be. So, it should move in this direction. For x equal to 0, it have to move in this opposite direction. So, for x equal to 1, n cap is i vector. For x equal to 0, n cap is minus i vector because it is moving in the opposite direction. Similarly, we can see this is going to be j vector and here it is minus j vector and here we have k vector and minus k vector. It is very easy to fill the table now. I said now we understand the ideas but filling the table is going to be very very easy. For x fill i i, for y j j, for z k k. So you can easily remember like this upper limit as positive i vector, lower limit as negative i vector. So i minus i, j minus j, k minus k. Done. Next we have f vector dot n cap. So n cap is ready, f vector is ready. Now we have to do the dot product. So the dot product is going to be 4xz. When you do with minus i, minus 4xz. For j vector, we have minus y square. Minus j vector, we have y square yz and minus yz. So it is very easy to compute students. Next what is values? See this equation. In this equation we have some values of x, y, z. Try to substitute this in f vector dot n cap. When you substitute x equal to 1 we will be getting 4z here 0. When I substitute y equal to 1 we will be getting minus 1 square that is minus 1 here 0. Put z equal to 1 we will be getting y and when you put z equal to 0 we get 0 done. Now, since we are dealing with x-axis, my ds is going to be dy 
dz either you write dy dz or you write dz dy accordingly we are going to choose the limits so for x write without x dy dz for y write without y that is going to be my dx dz for z write dx dy how simple it is students see the table is over from this now i can conclude surface 2 4 6 are going to be zero because the values is zero f vector dot n cap is zero so i don't want to integrate only i have to integrate s1 s3 and s5 so i made the problem most simple so s2 s4 s6 are zero next we have to evaluate surface 1 for surface 1 f vector dot n cap is 4z and ds is going to be dy dz limits are obviously 0 to 1 so double integral over s1 f vector dot n cap ds i am going to write double integral 0 to 1 0 to 1 either dz dy or dy dz because all the limits are constant from the table we have the value is 4z now integrating this will be getting 4z square by 2 limit 0 to 1 dy so integral 0 to 1 2 into 1 minus 0 dy integrating this will be getting 2 into y limit from 0 to 1 therefore double integral over s1 is going to be next we have to solve for s3 for this we have to go to the table s3 my f vector dot n cap is minus 1 dx dz therefore double integral over s3 f vector dot n cap ds is going to be double integral over 0 to 1 minus 1 dx dz now i'll take this minus outside integrating this we get x limit 0 to 1 dz when you substitute this it's going to be simply 1 so integral 0 to 1 dz integrating this will be getting z 0 to 1 therefore the value is minus 1 next we have to integrate for the surface s5 now for s5 we can see f vector dot n cap is y and ds is dx dy so therefore double integral over s5 f vector dot n cap ds double integral over 0 to 1 0 to 1 since it is y i am taking dy first and finishing the business even you can solve for dx dy that is also correct so integral 0 to 1 y square by 2 dx substituting the upper and lower limit will be getting 1 by 2 dx integrating this 1 by 2 into x 0 to 1 will be getting 1 by 2 therefore my double integral over s5 is 1 by 2 double integral over s f vector dot n cap ds is adding all the six spaces that is going to be 2 plus 0 minus 1 Plus zero plus one by two plus zero because my surface is S two S four S six are zero and now when you add all these things will be getting three by two as my LHS. Now let us go to the conclusion. My RHS is also three by two. My LHS is also three by two. Therefore, Gauss divergence theorem is verified for the given problem. Hope you understand. Now it's time for summary. some students want to write the material in a quick way so i'm just showing you can pause the video and you can write it given problem step 1 write f vector step 2 is limits step 3 is formula gauss divergence theorem then calculate del dot f vector you can have the visualization of the diagram step 4 is going to be rhs evaluate it find 3 by 2 for step 5 lhs we have front back right left top bottom we you know all the visualizations and you know the directions that is i j k from this we can able to construct the table so step 5 take the lhs six surfaces construct the table and then from the table find all the six surfaces luckily in this problem s2 s4 s6 are zero therefore we have to evaluate s1 s3 and yes 5 after evaluating all these things add everything we get my lhs as 3 by 2 already we found rhs is 3 by 2 so from lhs and rhs gauss divergence theorem is verified for the given problem hope you understand thanks for watching hope you found this video helpful subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends see you in the next video bye bye